The Steelers have had two of the most iconic running backs in league history, Franco Harris and Jerome Bettis. Third to them in Steelers rushing yards, Willie Parker. Parker, born November 11th, 1980 in Clinton, North Carolina, Parker was an absolute monster in high school. He would rush for over 1,300 yards and 20 touchdowns in his junior year. His senior year? He would rush for 1,800 yards with 18 touchdowns, all while averaging an insane 12.3 yards per carry. Willie attended the University of North Carolina and would hardly play during his time there due to the coach's plan for a power run scheme. Also, Parker's father stated that the murder of Willie's best friend affected his ability to adjust to the scheme. By 2004, Parker would be overlooked in the draft due to his lack of playtime. The Steelers would sign him as an undrafted free agent, and he would be buried in the depth chart behind the bus and Braun Haynes almost all of the 2004 season, until the final week where he would rush for over 100 yards on only 19 carries. 2005, Parker would get his chance when Deuce Staley and Jerome Bettis would go down early in the season. Parker would start the season for the Steelers, and he wouldn't disappoint. Willie would tear through the Titans for 161 yards on only 22 carries, and he would even put up another 100-yard performance against Houston a week later. Parker would finish the 2005 regular season with 1,202 yards and four touchdowns, and he would also be the second undrafted running back to surpass 1,000 yards in league history, the first being Priest Holmes. His performance in the Super Bowl that year would be unforgettable. He would have a Super Bowl record 75-yard rushing touchdown that to this day is the longest rushing touchdown in a Super Bowl. He would gift his Super Bowl ring to his father, Willie Parker Sr. By 2006, the Steelers would lock Parker in with a four-year, $13.6 million contract, and he wouldn't disappoint. Parker would play at one of the highest levels in the league, with 1,494 yards rushing and 13 touchdowns. Also, he would surpass 200 yards in the game twice that season, once against New Orleans and once against Cleveland. His play would help him reach the Pro Bowl behind LaDainian Tomlinson and Larry Johnson. In 2007, Park would put together another rushing rampage, with 1,316 yards rushing, but only adding two touchdowns. He broke his right fibula against the Rams late in December and would miss the rest of the season. And this would lead to Najee Davenport starting against the Jaguars in the playoffs. In 2008, he would recover well and go for 138 yards and three touchdowns against the opener against Houston in only three quarters. He would get injured four games into the season, missing five, which would lead to Mulholland and Moore getting playtime after Parker's injury and Mendenhall getting flattened by Ray Lewis. In the playoffs, Parker would erupt for his first and only 100-yard playoff game. He would go for 146 yards and two touchdowns, which would also become his final 100-yard performance. Parker would help in Super Bowl 43 with 53 rushing yards and help transform Pittsburgh into Sixburg. His final year of the contract in 2009, Parker would start the season as the starter and ultimately end up with a turf toe injury that would give Rashard Mendenhall his chance to shine. Parker would hardly get any carries until the final week of the season against Miami where he would go for 91 yards. In 2010, Parker would sign with the Redskins, but eventually not make the final cut in a crowded Washington backfield that included Larry Johnson and Clinton Portis. In 2011, the Virginia Destroyers would claim Parker, but by 2012, Parker would officially retire from football altogether. He would finish his pro career playing every snap as a Pittsburgh Steeler and accumulate 5,378 yards rushing and 24 touchdowns putting him as the Steelers' third all-time rusher, a place he still holds edging out Le'Veon Bell. Parker would become an assistant coach for West Virginia Wesleyan College in 2012, and in 2015, he would join former Steeler Dwayne Washington at Heritage High School in Wake Forest, North Carolina as a running backs coach. It's fair to say that Willie Parker didn't just overachieve. He dominated for a short span in Pittsburgh, an undrafted player was able to grind to the top ranks of one of the most prestigious franchises in NFL history and help bring two rings back to the Berg. Fast Willie was able to start for a half a decade and never once heard an off-the-field issue from him.
Parker may not have had the longevity of other greats, but for a short burst, Willie proved himself as one of the top backs in the NFL and established himself as a top tier player on and off the field. And since then, it doesn't seem like Pittsburgh's had a running back who can just break off a 70-yard run at any moment. Willie was truly a legend.